Welcome to today's video guys and we are back at Sidex here in Kuriyama, Japan. And as you can see behind me, the JZX is chilling, waiting for what is about to happen this weekend. My very first Drift Mitsuri here in Japan with an actual missile dedicated to me learning, smashing, and just not caring about how to get home. So there's a good chance this car will not be, there's probably, okay, let's just scrap that. This thing is probably not gonna look this clean after this weekend. I know that kind of sucks, but it's okay. I will be keeping it as clean as possible. We'll be adding over fenders and stuff like that if we damage anything, so it's not a big deal. But today, we have a very special modification to do to this thing. Um, a lot of you guys would have noticed that the previous seats that were in the car, um, we had this old Brid Bricks and some um, old Recaro SP3. Um, they're just not good for like up to current safety standards. They don't hold me in, I'm a big guy as well. And they're not a bucket, they're reclinable. So with the harnesses and stuff like that that I had in the car, um, my shoulders were way above the entry points of those harnesses and it just wasn't a good time. If you guys remember the footage, you know that I was way too big for that seat. But as you guys know, we've worked with Bright Japan before and uh, I spoke with Okachan and Brid and they hooked it up. So I am really pumped to be putting in some brand new Brid ZF4s with rails in the JZX. Um, we'll get into once we unbox them and we'll talk about why Brid Japan and Brid seats, or it's Bride or Brid, however you want to pronounce it in Japan, we say Brid, but I know in the States you guys say Bride, same, same, but obviously different. Uh, <laughs> Once we kind of get them out of the box and start installing them, I'll show you all the new features and why bride seats are the best aftermarket seats for your car. So that aside, let's get to it and start installing these things. We've obviously got the lovely Yashio factory harnesses in here as well to go along with them. Um, and then we're gonna be doing some work in the rear to make sure some smoke doesn't come through. Uh, oh, hang on, need to pop this. That's all disconnected because that's normally connected to the seat rail. Um, we're going to be getting some plastic core flute to tape into the sides here, which is straight through. Um, the only plate that we had welded in was this bottom one. And uh, yeah, if we get some core flute taped in there, that way uh, some less smoke will come in there and kind of like flood in the cabin, which is a big issue I was having last time. So, without that, well, with that guys, let's get to it. Just finished unboxing these two beautiful brides and I cannot wait to get these in the chaser. That aside though, let's go over some of the new features. These are the new Zeta 4s. Um, previously, I have used the Zeta 3s and the Zegas, I think is the correct pronunciation. It's a little bit confusing, um, but these are the new Zeta 4s. And the first thing I noticed was just these elongated holes and how much better that's going to be for tall lanky guys with the harness coming in through here, as well as just being able to pull the harness in and out of here means your buckles, especially on the big four inch proper harnesses, they're not gonna hit and have to go in on a weird angle and scratch it all up. Uh, the nice carbon here is a nice touch as well. Um, also, they've now gone and put a really stiff, strong leather on the sides here, which is great because this is where all the seats normally wear the most from you pushing up off here to get in and out of your seats. As well as they've gone and done this section here where the belts and stuff normally rub on. So that is great to see. The padding has been completely upgraded now too. As you can see, there's like, it's separated into four different sections. Um, I cannot wait to feel these out in the car tomorrow. It's gonna to be awesome. Um, but quickly, I just wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about um, genuine brid or bride seats and why it's important to always make sure you get genuine safety equipment, including seats and rails and harnesses. Um, first of all, to know that you're getting a genuine bride seat is to make sure there's this hollow sticker here that then covers over the corner on the bride manufacturing sticker here, which has a serial number here. This serial number then needs to be the same as the serial number that's on the knapback sticker down here. And this is the official sticker that says that this meets all the current safety standards and all that kind of stuff. This serial number here needs to match up with this one. Then your seat should come with an authentic authenticity certificate from Brid themselves with the official company stamp there. You can see that the serial number is stickered on there as well. Not only that, but it'll come with another warranty certificate that has the serial number there that you can then fill out with your information and the date of purchase. If these two things and these stickers don't come with your seat, 
you have a copy or a fake. Um, and fake seats and copies are just not something you want. Um, sure, they may look cool and they give you that street cred having brids in your car, but you cannot put a price tag on someone's life and copy seats and fake seats have there's so many videos on youtube of them breaking and smashing just like fake wheels um like like steering wheels and stuff causing people to get hurt and injured and even die um especially if you guys are putting fake copy seats as a passenger seat whoever jumps in your car as a passenger is at risk if you get into an accident so please i'm not your dad i'm not telling you what you can and can't do but please guys don't cheap out on your safety equipment it is something that is so important and same with harnesses and stuff like that like don't get cheap copy harnesses because it's your life at stake or someone else's life at stake depending if someone's in your passenger seat same goes for seat rails if you're not getting genuine seat rails that are not rated and tested for the seats that you're using um, you know the seats have a capacity limit and if you get into a decent wreck and you're a kind of heavy bloke if you have a cheap $30 rail from eBay that's going to bend and buckle and potentially break send you flying it doesn't matter if you have a harness or the correct seat or a genuine seat if your rails are not correct and they're fake copy weak things they're going to break and that's going to end up probably you getting injured or potentially die as well so just make sure your all your safety equipment helmet harnesses you know gloves face masks seats all that kind of stuff is all up to spec it's genuine it's tested fia certified it's just so important I, I'm, like if you're doing it for yourself that's fine put yourself at risk but if you have a passenger don't put someone else's life at risk because you wanted to cheap out and get a fake seat for that street cred. But anyways, that aside guys, rant aside, let's get these things installed in the car ASAP. Which I have to admit, I've never ever installed a seat in a chaser before. I don't exactly know where these bolt up. <laughs> uh, okay, I've got it stuck behind the roll cage on this section. It needs to go further forward. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I understand. Interesting. So that bolts in there like that. Alright. Well I guess we'll start getting the bolts in. Oh I got some new parsley boys uh, installed for me that I gotta show you. We'll do that after I finish bolting this guy in. But I think you guys are gonna like it. Got both seats installed now, both sets of harnesses, and look at those pink bits in there. I love the pink with the fluoro yellow and green here. Matches so well. Um, the other thing is, this is what I wanted to show you guys. So see the full buckles and like, uh, I'm not sure the official name for this. I guess you could just call it a buckle, but it's a thing that you pull and it tightens on everything. Look how easy that just goes straight through there. Look at that. Previously, you had to, you know, like go on a crazy angle and push past and cut and dig into the plastic a bit. But now, perfect. I'm gonna have to probably adjust these tomorrow to get them lined up perfect. And in the rear here as well, I'll probably have to lengthen one and shorten one. Uh, just because where the bolt-in points is, this one's kind of like shorter compared to that one all the way over there. Um, and I am planning to put that harness bar in there at some point in the future too. Probably by the next time I'm driving, we'll get that in there. If you guys remember last time, previously there were just some three random no-brain gauges in here. They would fly around when I was drifting. In fact, some of them stopped working. Um, the last time I was driving the car. So I got the guys to get me a Defi gauge kit. We've got the controller here and check this out. Genuines boys, these were not cheap. <laughs> it hurt paying for them. Start this puppy up. Hopefully we got heat in this too. I need to check that. Woo, 
JZ to life. Okay, so we've got oil pressure. We've got oil temp and water temp. They're the three gauges I needed because I have boost here already. So that's pretty much the most important things that I need to keep an eye on. I'm gonna set my alarms and everything with the controller later, um, and then we should be good. But I'm just glad we got genuine gauges in there that work, good sensors, everything all wired up properly in the engine bay as well and tucked in. This thing's gonna be mint. The next thing I wanna work on actually is we want, I wanna get the speedo working in the future. So we'll work on that as well, probably when we need to do the clutch disc because uh, the disc in this is actually, was a little bit worn when I got the car. So probably after uh, I've been dri I drive this for the next like seven days, I'll probably also get a new clutch disc installed. So we'll probably also figure out why the sensor in the gearbox isn't actually like talking to the speedometer here and, and the, the uh, cluster here and giving it a speed reading. So I'd love to know how fast I'm actually going sometimes. Um, but yeah, otherwise than that, I think uh, the next mod I wanna do is actually color in, do some coloring in on my tires. I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. So I have to be honest, I have never actually done this with any of my cars and it may be something tacky. Someone dropped something. <laughs> but, I really wanted to see what this would look like. Plus I also love Olino, so shout out to them. It really is the little things that uh, just make something so special. I've never ever painted in logos on my tires before and it looks so freaking good. Finish both sides. So these are the Valino Pergia, uh, Pergia 08Rs, the really grippy ones that I always run on the front of my cars. And how good do they look? Damn. Man, I've probably, I'm not gonna lie, I've spent about 20 minutes painting them, uh, but they look so good. I hope they hold up. It is like, it's not like special tire paint. It's literally just a random paint pen that we got from the home center. Hopefully it stays on there. But damn, does that look good with those wheels especially. All right, now onto the next thing that I wanted to get done tonight, which is I have some plastic core flute here and a full roll of gaff tape. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting this to shape to go into the trunk here and try to try and keep out as much smoke as I can. Um, the biggest issue that I think I have with this thing is just the cabin fills up with smoke really fast. Um, so if I can get some core flutes in there and tape it in, I know it's not going to keep all of it out, but if it keeps the majority out, it uh, should help a fair bit with smoke getting in the cabin and let me do a few more runs. So I'm going to get started on that and I'll show you guys the end result. Well, I guess it's official. My uh, missile is now held together with duct tape and uh, zip ties. <laughs> so, it looked kind of weird, but I'm just hoping that this uh, keeps some of the smoke out that that was then going into the cabin. I'm sure it will to some degree. Obviously, I know it's not going to be perfect, but if it, it takes at least 50% of the smoke that was coming in, it makes it a lot more easier for me to hot lap this thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. These things are probably going to end up just flailing out and then me having to go pick them up off track, but why not? We'll give it a go and uh, who knows? Maybe it will actually work. Going to pack everything up, clean up the shop because uh, I dumped a bunch of dirt there when I was cleaning out in there to get those things taped in. And then uh, pretty much ready to load this thing on the truck for tomorrow's shenanigans. The last thing we need to do today is get these stickers on. And I figured there was no better place to put them than on the rear door window here. I love Bride's logo. There we go. Perfect. Look at that coming off. Nice. One done. So check this out guys, the car is now ready to get loaded onto the truck for me to shred tomorrow. I am so pumped. This thing looks so good as well. Now that we've got the new Brids in there, Yashio harnesses, both passenger, and driver and i still i still can't get over how good painting the logos on the tires looks man i wish i did that sooner looks so good get a good look at this guys because this is probably the cleanest it's going to look for a long <laughs> after this weekend i don't know if it's going to look this good oh man all right we're going to pick things up at the hotel now i'm going to head and get some sleep because tomorrow i got to be up early
quick stop by the closest family mart to Ebisu Circuit. My hotel is literally just up there. This is my dinner tonight. Uh, pretty much just lemonade and instant ramen. It's pretty late. Um, actually, it's it's about 10.30 p.m. And uh, I don't know if you guys can hear this. It's absolutely nothing. It is so quiet out here. Um, in fact, if it wasn't cloudy, you'd probably see the stars like crazy. Anyways, um, we're pretty far out in Fukushima compared to Tokyo and uh, everything closes super early here. So you got no chance of getting dinner at a decent restaurant or anything um, after like 8.30. So we're gonna head to the hotel. Gonna eat some instant ramen, probably go soak in the onsen, help my shoulder. Oh, I didn't tell you guys about that in the vlog yet. I thought I wasn't gonna make it to Ebisu Circuit today because I pinched a nerve sleeping on my shoulder wrong. So I had to go to the Cairo this morning and uh, he reset it and, and it's been pretty much fine ever since. It's still a little bit painful, but uh, yeah, we had to make do with what we could. I was supposed to leave and get to like Fusto's workshop at 10 a.m. but I ended up getting there at 6 p.m. because of uh, having to go to the Cairo and the doctor and everything. Anyways, gonna pick it up once we get to our hotel. I don't know how well you can see this in the vlog, but Paul Walker's car is here at my hotel. Okay, it's a replica from Fast and Furious, but same, same, right? Anyways, um, I'm gonna head back into the lobby because I am editing. We've got friends here, um, the guys that own that car. You guys have met them and seen them previously in Daikoku PA videos, as well as Emi Chan is the model for a lot of the shirts that are on the online store. So keep an eye out for them in tomorrow's vlog. They're gonna be learning to drift, which is gonna be sick in their skyline, so I think it'll be a very cool video. But that aside, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, kind of back in the swing of things. I know I've missed a few days, just been enjoying some time off, and obviously I hurt my shoulder really bad, and uh, I'm really glad that we are able to get it fixed to the point where I can go driving tomorrow and actually still move around. It was scary, I couldn't even like lift my own body out of weight this morning because of how painful it was. So, thank God for chiropractors, hey. Anyways, I'm gonna probably have some fun on the simulator in there, and then I'm gonna head to bed, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, keep an eye out for a whole bunch of raw drifting content coming seven days at Ebisu Circuit. It's practically my own drift week here in Japan at six different tracks. So with that guys, smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Jamata. Also tell me in the comment section, what's the first part of my uh, chaser you guys think I'm going to crash first at Mitsuri. Peace out. Jamata.